Yehovah Malak, Ola Molamat, Yehovah Malak, Yame Radkis, Yehovah Gadol, Makarian Tios, Yehovah Erdanai, Yehovah Elohim, Kurios Tios Panta Kreta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Elda et Yehovah, Yel Emona Yehovah. Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Panta Creta. Baslios, Baslion, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Yehova the Bar Halal, Elohim the Bar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gibura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon is Unton Kurion. Kurion Nimahagion Panta Creta. Gadol Gadol Gebura Ehova Ishmal Kam Ehova Shamba Yelna Kum Yehova Elna Kum Yapa Natsak Israel La Sheker Gava Gava Triembos Yehova Isus Christos Pantakreta Gadol Gadol Gebura Mora Roshnasa Elohim, Elohim, Ileila Eshalut, Yehovah Malak, Yehovah Malak, Olam, Olam Ad, Yehovah Elohenu, Yehovah Ekad, Gadol, Gadol, Geburah. Zoan Logan Ogar Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes, Dikayasune, and Jesus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa Panta Creta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Derek Emunabakar, Mishfat Shava. The Megalogae of Yahweh El Elion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, in order to understand and to realize that one day the sight of the Lord our God could be calculated for a thousand years. Then if you're having one more day in your life, it has to be as good as God the Father has given you an ample grace an ample grace of life to extend for another twenty more years. You think it's a light thing to serve the Lord of a God? Hezekiah said, Is it a light thing that the sundial should go back to give him another fifteen years? The same verb which has been used over there in the Hebrew emphasizes in Isaiah 49.6, Is it a light thing to serve the Lord? And the point over here, what we read for the word light thing in the Hebrew it is called to be as kalal. And kalal meant to say to be of little account. But the pictographical representation says from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, Lord God the Father wants you all to be the disciples. That's why he grants you one more day. And that one more day in the sight of the Lord of a God, as we were looking yesterday, the concept of Mahaniyam, 
it goes to say 20 years of time and in that on an average if you would write 24 verses per day three and a half year to complete the bible but in case if you're not able to write 24 verses at least by the span of five years if you finish to write a bible once god the father wants you to experience that four terms of five years because the calculation of the verses being made by man around comes to 31,175 in the Bible. If we would round it up to 30,000 verses, then Mahaniam is a two camp. And the two camps over there, one camp of the Lord God's angel represents 60,000. So before, before and behind, 50, 60, 60,000 angels. So Bible could be divided for 30,000 verses. Then if you write for the first five years, 30,000 verses, then the next five years, 30,000 verses, then behind also five plus five, 30 plus 30, which is called to be 60,000. So friend 60,000, back 60,000, you have been ending up with 120,000 verses. And that's the concept of one day being renewed in our life. If God the Father could renew one more day, don't consider it to be as a light thing, little thing. He's so ample and gracious. He's so grateful in his mercies that just one day is not just 24 hours, but one day is as good as given in your life 20 years. If you would effectively use the time in becoming a scribe, because he wants every believer to look and to go ahead in becoming and making his disciples of all the nations confirming to the image of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So dear brethren, one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, using the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. Let's come back and learn what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us. On today's date in eternity past to the praise of His glory, His matchless, marvelous, pale wonders of His truth. We shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of Lord, though we don't deserve it, O Lord, it has given us to have one more day in our life, which is as good as having an ample grace of yours to live 20 years on this earth. And what we would do, O Lord, let us not practice that which is abhorring unto you. Let us not be into the category of the people wherewith we are all the time practicing abomination unto you. But rather, O Lord, edify us, correct us, discipline us, as we are given instructions through your word of God, so that we could be well trained to be present in the matchless, marvelous wonders of your glory. So, Father, being thankful for this great privilege which you have given for us to study thy word, we are so much happy, O Lord, to use the word, because in you is everything we have. So having that happiness to fulfill your desire, and nothing to be worried on this earth. As we study these things, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by the message which are prepared and kept for us on today's date. In a treaty past with the praise of your glory. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, sovereign Lord. Amen. So, dear brethren, we have over here to learn in Isaiah chapter 49, in verse number 6, which is said, it is a light thing that you should be my servant. In Isaiah 49, 5, he said, I have chosen you right from the mother's womb to be my servant. And here we need to learn the glorious thing which reflects back to God the Father, which is our strength, will be made known or manifested. So right from the mother's womb, if God the Father has chosen us to be for his glory, then serving Jehovah Elohim shall not be a light thing for us. The word kalal meant to say, going and making disciples of all the nations. It shall not be accounted for a very, very little thing, but it is of a great significance. That's why we have this verse in Isaiah chapter 17, which says in verse number 7, What this people of Israelites have been intended to be to the Lord, 
and what they turned out to be as a great failure. He said, the things pertaining to the man shall look unto his maker and his eyes shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. The same thing what he says right from the mother's womb, I have called you for my work. I have called you for my glory. The very simple logic what we are missing today in our pulpits. So, he says now, I have called you to serve me and you are considering it to be of a little account. You are considering it to be of no value. As a great commission which he gave for us, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, you are considering it to be of no value. You know how to illustrate that? God the Father has given, for example, if you have two homes, one home you gave for a rent. And then monthly you are not able to receive your rental. And, and besides that, you get every night a phone call from the tenant saying that water is finished, please on the bore or please on the motor. First of all, he's not able to pay the rent in time. And above all, he thinketh that he is still demanding to put the water or make the water to come in. By thinking that as a watchman, the way how they tell to the watchman, saying that on the water, water is got over. So as a owner, you get very angry. And you would say, first pay the rent in proper time, then you will get your water. The same thing is happening with us. Christ our Lord of our God has given on rent his body. This is the flesh. This is not your own. You have been purchased with a great price. Therefore he says, that which is not yours, if you are not able to be faithful for that, how would God the Father grant you that which is yours? And this body has in it the soul and the spirit after becoming believers in Christ, called to be trichotomous in the Lord. And you need to take a very proper well care of the soul and spirit, confirming to the image of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So now in simple terms, if you would look, confirming to the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is what you need to take care of your soul and spirit while you have been still alive on this earth. And then you need to pay your dividends or your monthly rents. How you have to pay? Giving to God the Father that which is due unto Him. Because first of all, you are not your own. God the Father has made you. He is your master. He is your creator. He owns everything. He has every legal rights of you. Since he has made you, you need to worship him according to his theory. You know, he gave us a sort of a volution of freedom. That the people are not able to worship him according to his terms and conditions. According to his demands. And the Lord God is a gentleman. He has, get to, he has given you that free will. But being a owner of the home, you can't give that free will to the tenant. You would ask him to pay the, ten, pay, pay the rent. Christ, our Lord of our God, he said long back, I have bought you with a great price, I have made you for my glory. Right from the mother's womb, you are my servants to, to serve me. And moreover, in the church age, he calls you to be his friends. Servants do not know what the master thinketh, but the friend knows what the master thinketh. So he has upgraded you to something more in the church age. So we cannot be still the same category of the people of the past dispensation to say that, Lord, we will be your servants. You have to be saying, now, Lord, we are your friends. Lord, we could be something greater than your friends called to be your wife. So has given for us something great and unique to understand. You know how we are doing with this flesh? Like the tenant, we are not able to pay the rent. And yet, though God the Father has given us a great invitation, as he says in Matthew 22, he said, Come and let's enjoy 
the wedding feast of my son. Then what these people they did? He said in Matthew chapter 22 in verse number 5, saying that, but they made light of it. The same thing what we're doing today. It is a light thing for us to take the great commission of our Lord. We're enjoying all the things, but we're not paying the due, that which is due to Lord God the Father, His glory. So he said in verse number 4, particularly in verse 3 we begin with, And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, that is bulls, my fatlings are nothing but grain-fed animals, are killed, and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, a melio. And the word a melio, you know what? Careless, negligence. The same thing over here in Jeremiah chapter 48, you have this word. The one to whom the will of Lord God the Father has been revealed. If he is yet careless, you know, that's why you need to look very carefully, dear brethren, the remnant which Lord God the Father has chosen for us to be. So he says, Cursed he be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. The word deceitfully is called to be remia. And what is that remia? Slackness, laziness. And you will find the word called to be like idle, like trickery, deceitfulness. So what do they do with the beguiling nature? Anything which they think in their head to be high. The same thing what they did. They were careless. They were negligent. You know, that's a very big problem for us today. Because God the Father intends for each and every believer not to be negligent in doing the will of Lord God the Father. But these people, they have become negligent. Because to restore the preserved, he said, in Isaiah 49, 6, Why did I have choose you to be the servants and you're considering it to be a light thing? So he said, you're considering to serve me. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> to consider to serve me and to rise up the tribes, to restore them, you think it's a very light thing. You know, the people who shall be restored. He uses the word, the preserved. The Hebrew word over here for the preserved is called Natser. And who are the people that are Natser? The people who are very well enough or very well aware about the point that there is a wedding feast. And when the servants are coming to call, they should be well prepared to wear their garments and enter into that wedding feast. That's the people wherewith he calleth us to be there. The people who are prepared. You know, this word, it has been translated into the English as only prepared. But the Hebrew over here in the text, it emphasizes twice the word prepared. And that's what we look upon the standards to whom Lord God the Father cometh, predestined to conform to the image of Christ. These are the ones who are, who are waiting and not to consider the call of Lord God as a light thing. So here in 49.6 of Isaiah, if you would look in the Hebrew, it says that, He is saying, He is lightly esteemed from to be of you to me servant. And then he said, and to rise up, that is, to become powerful, or to make them to be well established from the rising of the sun to the going of the sun, the tribes of Jacob, the formed ones, one being preserved. You know, the word one being preserved and the word what we call 
as the formed ones so he says in the english saying that and to restore the preserved of israel the word there we lose formed ones but in the hebrew the strong code number for it is 5341 followed by 5336 twice it has been used so the word not said it is nothing but under any pressure under any Thing pertaining to be the vigor and valor in this life, you will be coming to restore back the renovated knowledge of Christ in you, no matter what it is. That's the word natser. Under any circumstances, under any pressure, under anything, no matter what, you are the formed ones. That's what he said. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what he emphasizes every believer to be as a disciple growing up into grammatias in the Lord. Therefore, light in you, therefore you have been said, you have to be looking upon the great light of Bible doctrine which shall shine in you. So that's the word, first not say, 5341, the formed ones. In the English, we lose that essence. But you're making the wedding feast of my Lord God to be as a useless, worthless thing. They consider it to be careless. And doing the work of Lord God has become for you absolutely careless. With laxity, with guile, with slackness. Therefore you are not able to look upon if one more day has been renewed in our life. It's as good as a span of 20 years for Christ being given for you. So that you can grow up to be four times or 60 in the front and 60 in the back. To be the verses of Lord God to be inculcated for you to be the wall of fortification in Christ. Therefore he says, I have formed you for my glory. Don't make it to be a light thing. I've called you to serve me. Don't make up your body for the silly stupid things of this life. And being worrying on that, you're neglecting the marvelous wonders of his glory. Therefore, he said in Matthew 22, emphasizing verse 6 and 7, he called them. Some of them, he says, you know, how negligent they were, how reckless they were. In Matthew 22, 5, you have been chosen by the Lord God for his glory. But he says, these people over here in Matthew 20 to 5, the way how they were negligent. He said, particularly first, they made careless of him and went their ways. The paths which they have built up, up Arkhamai, they departed, they went along into their paths, and one to his farm, another to his merchandise. The word farm meant to say the field or the land. And then the one merchandise meant to say over here for his trade, emporia. And then furthermore he says the remnant, the people who were others, they were the, who were not having the field or the merchandise, the remnant took his servants and treated them spitefully. That is, they acted with insolent, shameful words. That's what today they're trying to do, though the word of Lord God has been taught. Though we are asking them to come and carry their cross every day. Come back and pay the tithe of your time every day. If you want to have a witness like Enoch not to taste the death, then give your time minimum 20, 20 hours of your every day to the Lord God. You know, they're making uh, shameful. They're acting insolent. They are making up to be outrageous. You know, they're just acting in such way. So, they are entreating shamefully and what they're doing, ultimately they're killing. You know, the people who are formed, that's what he said. To restore the preserved of Israel, the word formed, again, not said, followed by the word not said in the Hebrew emphasizes, those whom God the Father has chosen and put you in the church age so that you are believers in Christ, these are being preserved to confirm to the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, consider your high calling of God, your holy calling of God, your heavenly calling of Lord God. Do not be confirmed to this world, but rather renovate your life as per the demands of Bible doctrine, because you have been formed to confirm to the image of Christ. You know, that's the very great privilege what we have now to be as Christians in the church age. You're not able to understand the impact of these words. 
You cannot simply die like unbelievers. You cannot simply die in the vanity of this world. You know, if you're dying in the vanity of this world, what does the word of Lord God say? He hates six things. Proverbs chapter 6. You know, these verses, you have might have read it in verse number 16. There are six things which the Lord hates. The word six is very, very important. It is called as she'esh. And the word she'esh, the cardinal number, you know what does it mean to say? Twice in the pictographical representation, the thinking, again followed by the pattern of thinking. What is your thinking? The six things he says, what is man? The thinking of man is hating to the Lord. Therefore, the man's thinking has to be replaced by the thinking of Christ. That's very simple logic. The word six, your thinking is an abomination to the Lord God. No, that's why what they did. They saw the servant of the husbandman and they thought, if we kill him off, we can have the vineyard. Though they were bidden to come and have every day the meat, the grain-fed animals every day to have it, if they have been given that privilege. You know what they're saying? We are having our farm. We are having our empire merchandise. And the people who are free, what they're doing? They're considering the words of Lord God to be useless, worthless. And what they're trying? They're trying to kill. The same thing what they're doing over here. When he uses your thinking, when he looks your thinking, the six things which the Lord hates, your thinking. When he has called you for the great invitation, you're not having time to become a disciple. You're not having a time to grow up into grammar tears. You're not having a time that have been formed by the will of Lord God the Father to be his preserved men. You're not having time that the, which the word of Lord God calls. In fact, indeed, rather than paying the rent, you're demanding for Lord God the Father to bestow upon you more grace. You're not humble enough even to realize that though you're not able to do the will of Lord God the Father, Lord God the Father has granted you one more day to, his, to do His will, to work His will. But you're not at all worried on that. Now what a great thing it is for us to learn about these things. You are not at all worried. And you know what for you are worried? Your sickness, your income, your money. Therefore, Lord God the Father says, the six, Sha'esh, the word, meant to say cardinal number six. You know what, Lord God the Father has problem with us. Why does he give that number six to man? Number five is grace. Number seven is completion. Number eight is new beginning. Number six has been given and assigned to man. You know why? Your thinking is rotten. That's what we need to look from Isaiah 17 again. He has called you for a great purpose. But the people have left that purpose of the Lord. That's what he says in Isaiah 17:7. And many people may not interpret that because it's a tough thing, they say. But the pictographical representation is very simple over there in Isaiah 17. They're not able to make a sense of that verse. But the pictographical representation of Isaiah 17 makes a very clear sense. He says over here, And that day shall a man look to his Maker, and his eye shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. And then where he shall not look, he shall not look into his own thinking. The six things which the Lord God hated. So we find, and he shall not look to the altars, the work of his hands, neither shall have respect that which his fingers are made, either the grooves or the solar images, that is sun images. And he says in verse 9, In that day shall his strong cities be as a forsaken bow. That we meant to say what? The people, the way today they're thinking, their defense weapons will be in the standards of the thinking of men. Or if they have corona, they can have some sort of vaccine. If they have any military uh, attack, they can have some shield. You know, he says that the strong city shall be as a forsaken bow. 
that meant to say whatsoever man think this could be a fortification this could be a well regard of invitation or that can protect us it says that is just like a forsaken bow and the uppermost branch here what we look and the uppermost branch which they left because of the children of israel and they shall be dissolution what is that uppermost branch dear brethren day by day making up your blood to be the disciples for the word of lord god that they have forsaken you know you have made your protection into some sort of a great strong cities but it said this is not worth the uppermost branch and that's what he said day by day the things which you have to become a disciple day by day for which god the father has preserved and kept you to be his men day by day what lord god the father has intended you to be before the foundation of the world in christ that you have forsaken therefore what happens the children of israel will become dissolute and the word dissolute you know again dear brethren shamiamim and the word over here shamiamim or devastation what you look it meant to say your thought process is not having that vigor and valor that should drive your life it is not what your physical food or the blood that drives you but your thought process that drives you and that thought process is been shattered the thought process of bible doctrine therefore he said in isaiah in prob 6:16 saying that the six things your thought process process i hate and what is that your thought process he says over here in isaiah in proverbs chapter 6 the first thing he says what do i hate sane that which you have been erecting a structure in your vigor and valor to say that you will defend i will defend myself but not come to the grace of god i will not walk in the will of lord god I will defend myself I will have my own life I will have my own vigor that's what he said saying that sane I will hate because you are not coming to the grace of God you are not paying the rent and that you're demanding to give more from the Lord or ask more from the Lord that's what he said I hate that because your thinking is not grace then he said seven are an abomination the seventh one and what is that seventh your thought process which has been now absorbed by your body and that becomes your viewpoint of life that's the word what we call shiba actually your thought process should be associated with the viewpoint of bible doctrine but your thought process is not taking the oath the oath of fulfilling the things pertaining to lord god therefore he says this is an abomination of an abomination the word abomination dear brother it is called to be toeba that which should have been perfection in the sight of lord god has become under the authority of your own viewpoint of life from the standards of men for your body it has become for me to be like a disgusting thing you know what a simple words these are if you would look into the original languages of the scriptures the thinking of you which should be perfection first of all he said the six i hate it you're thinking i hate and that which should be a perfection it is not therefore seventh one is an abomination to me it's a disgusting thing to me something which i hate forever and then what does he say now he says a proud look the first one you know what does man think it apart from coming to know the will of lord god apart from knowing the will of lord god that's what we have been reading from isaiah 49 if isaiah 17 in verse number 9 that should be your sort of a great mountain look has become a dissolution that means you should come to learn the word of lord god every day you should know the will of lord god every day but what you have turned out now it has become like a dissolution shattered up your thought process is not having the blood to pump in that your thought process should be if your one day has been renewed you have to good look another 20 years of time given by god the father why because you need to write the bible you need to complete the bible you need to look upon the demands of the word of lord god But you know, worrying and seeking and dying in your own mental attitude sense, your priorities, your prejudice. You know, your first one, the prejudice. You can look upon the standards like a proud look. 
you know, anything that which is high or lifted up. The word proud meant to say room. Your thought process is saying that my have great strength in my blood. I have great strength in my vigor and valor. That's enough to me, no matter what. How God can instill me for me the sickness. You know, union leader, son, which is a live example for us. He was not even 40 years of age. The union leader was around 70 years of age and all thought that his son will be a great one for us. They are Christians as well. And the thought is having his young age, he's having a good one. You know how God the Father teaches us lessons through these lives? Proud luck. Thinking to say, I have power with me. Thinking to say, I can make many things in me. But the hell, Lord God the Father made that proud look to be vanished because he hates. No matter whatever great he may be, or however big he may be, however, however marvelous you may be, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Christ of Lord of God, humbly come unto his service. Don't have that proud look. And by the age of 40, suffering with throat cancer, he died. And his father is still alive, though. Proud meant to say what having in your head to say that I have strength in my body. I have great blood that pumps in my body. I can easily become the things pertaining to say that I will survive another 40 years in my life happily. Today you are, tomorrow you may not. Have the seal of Lord God upon you, the Tave Tav mark of Ezekiel 9 4. Having a well desired card of Lord God the Father signed in your life, so that Lord God the Father can establish you. First be established as a scribe. First be encountered with Lord God the Father, that you are the beloved one of the Lord God, to be anointed with the Holy One of Lord God. And then be established. How are you going to establish? Day by day as you grow up in grammatias, day by day as you grow up to write the word of Lord God, be established. And as you're going to get established, God the Father will further strengthen you. He doesn't keep you away, but God the Father will further strengthen you. He goes to establish you further. And you know what we're doing today? You're not able to do that which has been demanded for us in the Bible. What the word of Lord God says in the Bible. And rather what we're trying to do. Proud look. The very first thing what Lord God the Father hates in you. The proud look. Proud in the sense of becoming. To say, I have in me the vigor, I have in me the valor, I have in me the renovated head according to the standards of knowing all the cunning wisdom of this world. And that makes me to pump. If I'm having any sickness, I will go to the doctor. If I'm having any trouble, I will go to such and such an expert. But you're not coming to look your creator, the one who made you. Now God the Father has problem with our thinking. He wants our thinking to be corrected. Don't let go the house top, as he said over here in the standards of Isaiah, chapter four, chapter 17, in verse number 9. He said, the people of Israelites, how they have been failed, because they have left the house top and the city's uppermost branch. Uppermost branch. What is that uppermost branch? Having a fellowship day by day in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Having to grow up to become as per the thinking of Christ. That's what they have left. They have left the uppermost branch. Therefore, where they ended up, dissolution. 
No man on the face of the earth can try to get succeed by disobeying the commandments of Lord God. It is better for us to shut all the holes of our body and simply humbly obey like the donkey having nothing to do except to make Christ our Lord our God to sit upon the back and to lead him to the path wherewith he wants us to be led. Therefore, dear brethren, preach remission, remission followed by repentance, change your mind and the remission is meant to say what your sins have been put away so come to look upon the resurrection body prepare for your resurrection body that's what first you have to preach remission of your sins he has been paid it on the cross now you have only one thing to carry your cross open up your eyes to look upon the pale wonders of his word and become that which has been demanded and don't let go your uppermost branch no matter what be a disciple no matter what, don't consider it's a light thing to serve the Lord. What he has called for you, don't consider it to be just as a light thing, silly thing. You may think, what is there to serve the Lord? Oh, dear brethren, God the Father can't be happy if you're not serving him. Cursed is the one who doeth the work of Lord God negligently, slackness, laxity. And the reason why it is called to be cursed, one you know, because the people are not able to wake up to the high holy heavenly calling. You are considering your body to be great treasure, but you are not able to realize whether we live or die, we serve Christ. Whether we live in the flesh or out of the flesh, we need to be all the time in the presence of Lord God the Father. And standing in the presence of Lord God the Father demands that we think Bible doctrine. You have been formed right from the womb of the Lord God, as is said, to be the slaves of Bible doctrine. Therefore, the very first thing what he hates in the thinking of man, the proud look, the people to whom he has preserved and kept. If you have a proud look, correct it. Of course, we do have a proud look in many things in this life. Therefore, the proud look I in is nothing but fixing upon your eyes, your eyes upon your vigor and valor. That's what people think. We are having good vigor and valor. We are having good power lust. We are having good approbation lust or many lust. You know, you may say, I'm having enough financial power with me so I can make anything. That's a proud look. Support of the people, you may think it's a proud look. So the first thing what Lord God the Father hates, the proud look. The second thing what he says, lying tongue. What is this word lying? The Hebrew word is called to be shaker, deception. What is the deception? From the rising of the sun to the going of the sun, you're having a head which has not been renovated as per the exegetical Bible doctrine. Your thought process. Your thinking process is not anaginisco, as he said, have you not read at least once? And you're trying to make up to say to the world that you can really transform them, you can really renovate them, but the Bible says you cannot transform them without teaching in the standards of exegesis in your pulpits. So lying tongue, the word tongue is called to be lashon. And what is that tongue? It has to be all the days of this life into the standards of making a disciple. The tongue is an organ of speech so that the tongue could be used as a wedge. It can also be used as an in God. It could be used as a fork and it can be used as a covey of water. We read that long back. So what is this tongue appearing? It has to be a tongue of the learned, not to be the lying tongue. Therefore, he said in Ephesians as well as in Colossians, lie not to one another. If you're lying to one another, you're grieving Lord God, the Holy Ghost. You may think you're talking to your neighbor, the word of God, and that word of God, if it has not been properly originated from exegesis, then take it granted for sure you're lying the word of Lord God to those people and your tongue is a not a learned tongue. Because tongue has the power of life and death. And people today, they talk many silly, stupid things with this tongue. The tongue has been given to preach nothing but the word of Lord God. Better to shut your mouth if you don't have anything to talk apart from the word of Lord God. 
people will talk rumors people will inculcate lies people will say the reason of the death of this person is purely because he was diabetic and in order to control his diabetic sickness he took medicines and his kidneys got affected and his age of around 40 or 45 and therefore he's been dead and the people will think now let us not consider such medicines to our body you know what his tongue has spoken the tongue has spoken lies though it may be a fact because he said they that trust in the lord of a god are like mount zion they cannot be shaken but the problem with you all is you're still a lukewarm believers. That's the great problem with you. You're neither hot nor cold. Therefore God the Father will vomit you out. You're not either hot nor cold. What you have to be, you have to be zealous ones in the Lord. That zealous ones indicates that there is no compromise. And the word of Lord God says minimum 120 years for you to live. Then what you have to live? No lying tongue. Your tongue should become the tongue of the learned. That's what we read in Isaiah 50 verses 4 through 7. Therefore over here your lash on indicates that every thought should be brought into captivity for Christ as per the demands of becoming a disciple. But what is happening? You're becoming the second category called to be untrue words which are meant to deceive. Your thought process is not renovated as per the original languages of the scriptures. Therefore, anything you speak, he said, it is not anagenisco, and that anagenisco failure will lead you to become lying one on this earth. Therefore, a great warning to the preachers who are standing in the pulpits. You are talking to the congregation lying words if you are not teaching the word of Lord God from Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. At least learn the word from the standards of sound exegetical doctrine. Exegesis, let them be the order of your pulpit. In the interlinear, let them be for you. If you are not doing so, then it is called to be a lying tongue. Therefore, what you, what you do, you let go your uppermost style of learning the word of God. And what you become, you become desolate. You know what the reasons he said in Isaiah 79, why you become dissolute in verse 10 and 11, we find the reason. Why there are not many commentators who are able to give a proper interpretation of that because they left the uppermost branch that you can't find in the Hebrew, but it says in the pictographical representation of the Hebrew saying that the blood left the fear of becoming disciples. Therefore, John 1, 11 and 12 emphasizes the new thing for us in the church age. What did he give us? He gave the power to become what? The sons of God. And what we're doing to become the sons of God? Nothing by faith alone in Christ alone. Now, what is your privilege? You're called to be a tech non-believer, disciple to the word of Lord God. That's what you have been called now. And what you're planning, what you're doing, what you're looking. You're just considering your life to be silly, stupid. So, dear brethren, he says over here, emphasizing, false or untrue words which are meant to deceive. So don't make up your tongue to be a lying one. Be the tongue of the learned one. Because we have a lot many things to learn, get more from the Bible. There are a lot many things to explore from the Bible. The world doesn't know that. They have been digging, kept, and hidden in the Bible until as you go to that working of a coal mine or a gold mine, you cannot get back to dig them. You need to dig and take, dig and take, polish, dig and take, polish. It's an unending mine what we have over here in the Bible. Every day you dig and take. You have a lot many things to dig and take and shine. The only thing which faileth you is the time. People don't love to listen for more than one hour. But yet you have a lot many things to dig and take. And after you die, you don't have any other work. Either you have to go to the heaven or to the hell. If you're ending up in the hell, you will be really regretting the chances why you have left not to read the Bible. If you're going to heaven, you'll still have a lot more things to, to, to learn because you have been pleasing God the Father on this earth to know a lot many things about Him. So, after you die, anyways, you're going to end up in eternity, either in heaven or hell. So, why can't you make up your time on this earth right now to learn the things pertaining to the word of Lord God on this earth and become the pale wonders of His glory? Because all the things of this earth, as He said, they will vanish off. 
only the things which are pertaining to the word of Lord God that alone will abide and all other things will just vanish off. They will not abide forever. So they will just end up. So why can't you spend your time to become the tongue of truth? The lot many things which you need to dig, the lot many things which you need to study, the lot many things which you should make known to these people because they're not able to look upon them, they're not able to learn upon them. That's what you have been called. But the problem with you all is that you're not able to look. Because your tongue has become the tongue of liar. Though you may say you don't lie, but the word of Lord God says, yes, indeed you're lying. Why, you know, you're talking the burden of other man. You're not talking the burden of Lord God. You're talking the words of each other man. You're not talking the words of Bible doctrine. If you talk the words of Bible doctrine, you wouldn't say by the age of 40 or 45, he was suffering with sugar, so he took a lot of medicines and his kidneys got killed and he died. Though maybe the reason, but the reason for his death, you know very well, ignorance of Bible doctrine, ignorance of the fear of Lord God. You know, Leviticus 26 should be embedded in our pulpits. Deuteronomy 28 should be read in our pulpits every week at least once when they come to the church. That should be the order of reading. You know why these people, they don't read them? Because they don't want to hear that which is a curse, that which is hurting them. They want to hear that which is pleasing their itching ears to be heard. They don't want to follow that which has really been there in the Bible. You know what they want to say? Lord God will give you that land flowing with milk and honey. Don't worry, let's go and fight. But they don't say, if the Lord God would delight in us, then we shall have that land flowing with milk and honey. They lose the condition, if, 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 that conditional clause, if, if the Lord God would delight in us, if. They don't look into that condition, if. And in return, what they're doing? <laughs> Spending their time in vanity. And that's how the church has been running today. Vanity, vanity, vanity. How much they're trying to spend their time in vanity. What they want? Dobbing you with untempered mortar. Why? Because the tongues are not clean. The tongues are not for truth. They would speak the truth. What did John the Baptist taught them? He showed them their sins. He did not go to have a sweet sugar-coated preaching and say, Well to please you, well to see you. He said, Who has told you to come to look upon the wrath of Lord God? Who has warned you? You generation of vipers, you just told them their sins, the practicing of those sins. Today the pastor teachers are not having a tongue which has been truth, a tongue which has been clanned. They're having a tongue of liars. Now that's what the congregations are running today, for lying tongues for sugar-coated preaching, for making them to think God is looking and asking for bribe. Give him some money that is called to be a third percent of your tithe of your income and he'll be happy to provide you this. He'll be happy to provide you that. If there is anything lacking in the church, come and ask to give for a sponsorship from your side. God will be happy to help you that. No, dear brethren. He may be happy to consider you that you're paying your alms before the destruction could come in Deuteronomy, Daniel chapter 4, when he said to Nebuchadnezzar, or the devoted works of Cornelius, your prayers might be heard, then then what? That was salvation? No, they were making for Daniel chapter 4 not to enter into that great wrath of Lord God to enter upon him. And in Deuteron and Acts chapter 10, we look now after his prayers have been heard or his good works have been known, then the way of salvation has been given. But for you right now through Christ the way of salvation is made known. So what you have to do, not your good works, not your stupid works to impress the Lord, but to carry your cross every day and follow the Lord God and become his disciple, grow up into grammatias. So don't be a lying tongue. Teach them the truth. 
The greater you preach them lies, the greater the church is becoming drowned into the vanity of this thinking. They're just happy to spend their time in the vanity of this thinking. And they're not even able to look what for they're able to spend their time and energy and life. You know, if they have any sickness, they want to say that, let me be healed. For what? So that you can go and continue to produce the same sin. Why well, should have a good health? Why well, should have a good home or good diet? To serve the Lord, that's very simple logic. But if people are trying to have all luxuries, comfortableness of this life, for what? To end up in a lustful patterns of your old sin nature? Spending up your weekdays or saying to celebrate your festivals, drinking, enjoying with the lustful woman. And you say you want good health. That's a proud look. Be careful, dear brethren. The strength and the energy and the body has been given by Lord God to proclaim His good news, to do His good will. Nothing else than that. So, dear brethren, he says the second word, lying tongue. And we come to the third one, a hand that sheds innocent blood. The word innocent blood, dear brethren, or shedding is called shafak, to pour out. You know, the people who are far away from grammatia's level of thinking. You know, that's a sin in the sight of Lord God. Because these are the ones who don't have that vigor and valor to look and to make their blood to flow, to be grammatia's. That's what the word shed meant to say. We have the root word shed, which is called over here to be as the word shapak and how does it relate it is a pouring up of your blood or liquid or having to go for your progeny through your penis so he claims over here your thought process and your mouth should be all the time like a scribe and why we refer back to that word pouring out of your liquid through your penis called to be the semen that has life giving essence in that so don't shed the innocent blood the word innocent over here, the people who are not able to go on to the next level of eternal life. These are innocent, so give them the right word. Therefore, the blood could pump and think upon the likeness of Bible doctrine. That's what it is. Give them, and the people who are shedding such are the hands which are making not to become scribes. He said, I hate them. So the first category, it would be a proud look. The second category, lying tongue, the tongue which has not been learned to become a disciple. The third category, these are the ones who are not entering to become grammatias, neither they're making others to enter. The fourth category, the heart, which is far away from discipleship, deviseth, called to be the word as karash, flows or engraves you know the thought process of the head as per the pattern of this world what they do they plow wicked imaginations what is that wicked imaginations thinking that we can rely upon our own invention rather than going to god rather the word invention of isaiah 17 what we're looking in verse number eight their own standards of handmade solar images that's what he said the things pertaining to the heart which deviseth wicked imaginations. That means having your trust in the man rather than God. And then your feet, which is not able to walk as per the demands of Bible doctrine, ragel, one step at a time, to become a disciple, they have been swift in running to mischief. So what they're doing, their head and their blood, is been so much under that great pressure in their life that they love to do that which is called to be distorted thinking, to be the head, raga. So the fifth one, a heart that divides with wicked imaginations. The fourth one, the fifth one, the feet that run to swift into mischief. The sixth one, he says now, false witnesses. Again, the word shaker, shaker and the lying tongue both are the same witnesses are called to be what you have been called to be a witness to the word of Lord God which have failed to be enough so so he says you that you are a false witness and what you're doing you're speaking you're opening up your mouth in the 
the wall of fortification called to be lies, the word kazeb, untruth. What is that lies? Without a scribe becoming attitude in you or growing up to be a scribe attitude in you, whatsoever you talk or preach or make it up, he said, it is lies, kazab. The words which have been meant for failure, disappointment, deceiving, and they have been talking not the capacity they have been deceiving you so that they have been far away from the capacity the words which they have meant to be so the grammatical level of thinking because you fail to dig and take and your body is not reflecting that thinking therefore these are the six things and when you let go the uppermost branch these are the six things that happen. Therefore, he says over here in Isaiah chapter 17, in verse number 10 and 9 particularly, In that day shall the strong cities be as a forsaken bow, and an uppermost branch which they left because of the children of Israel, and there shall be dissolution. Because he gives reason in verse 10 and 11. These are very, very important. You have forgotten the guard of the salvation. You haven't been mindful of the rock of the strength. Therefore you shall plant pleasant plants and shall set it up with strange slips. In that day you shall make thy plant to grow, and the morning you shall make thy seed to flourish, but the harvest shall be as a heap in a day of grief and of a desperate sorrow. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas. That's what the people are trying to do today, thinking that they're running the churches. And to the rushing of the nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations shall rush like the rushing of man waters, like a rushing of man waters, but God shall rebuke them and they shall flee afar off. And and shall be chased as a chaff of the mountains before the wind, and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. And behold, at evening tide trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. You know, what does he say? The people who have left the things, this is the fate of them, because they will become desolate. So what they have sowed? They have sown, he said, for pleasant plants, and what they are betting to heap, day of grief and desperate sorrows. Why? Because the six things which Lord God hated, they practice that in their life. When you let go the true word of Lord God, when you let go to carry your cross every day, when you let go to become the disciples of the word of Lord God, and you think upon the details of life are more important, things of life are more important apart from the word of Lord God, then the six things what you have over here, beginning with the proud look, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, that meant to say people are not making to be grammatias, uh, heart that devised with wicked imaginations, the wicked imaginations are nothing but distorted thinking in their life, and feet that run in sift to make mischief and the sixth one a false witness that speaketh lies and the seventh one he says dear brethren he that soweth discord among brethren the word soweth is called as shalak what is the meaning he sends apart from discipleship program all stupid lies so what does he discord he sends up as the word goes on to say like Meden. So what does he do? He goes on to make upon like a strife. The thought has been brought into strife. Where among the brethren, the brethren is what today you find in the church age as the thing pertaining to be as from the same mother's womb. But here you find what these people are doing. They're having discord. Therefore you find what discord today. Many denominations. Having many denominations is a great abominational filth in the sight of Lord God, but these people are not able to look upon that. So, dear brethren, if you're practicing these six and seven things in your life, first of all, your thought process, and that which should be a complete way, it has been failed to become not that which is the word of Lord God, the seventh one, which should be actually your oath. Your oath has become to be the viewpoint of your own life, but it is not in accord with the word of Lord God. So he says, these things I hate. And what you're performing? You think still you're really great. You think still you're really doing good. Oh dear brethren, the people to whom he has formed before the foundation of the world. He preserves them. He preserves them so that they could be far away from the six and the seven things. 
Why? So that they shall not let go their paramount branch and end up into the day of desperate sorrows. That's what your life is. As it says over here in Isaiah chapter 17 in verse number 11. What do you find? You are going to find a day of grief and desperate sorrows. So don't consider it's a light thing for you to have the salvation. Don't consider it's a light thing to enjoy your grace in stupidity. But rather wake up to the reality of the word of Lord God and do the will of Lord God. Because you have been given the privilege... If one more day, 20 years of lifetime of a span has been extended, make that day a day of great joy to God the Father, taking a decision to become a scribe, carrying your cross, rather than making it to be a day of grief and a desperate sorrow. Because you hate what Lord God loves. As he says in Proverbs 8, 34 to 36, those who hate me, they love death, and those who love me, they live for a great life we have short of time we shall come back and continue tomorrow as lord god the holy ghost led us to the praise of his glory and his grace and which way you want to go you decide so with the head board eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those of without christ without hope and without eternal life in audible telling to lord god the father in the privacy of your soul that believe my christ my lord my rock my savior that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth this eternal truth for us for very simple believing christ you shall be saved Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, that with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to care to Satan Lagan, herald the word in season out of sin, because the diamond my witnesses for which you have been called. The number one diamond my witnesses in Wellington Eighty for the Bible in our hands, the number two diamond my witnesses of hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, then tarry and will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us, to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, being grateful and thankful for His great privilege, O Lord, to redeem the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to know what you hate, and to know the things which are abominable unto thee. Help us, O Lord, not to let go the uppermost branch of yours, but rather help us to walk according to the fellowship of the word in each and everything which you have given for us to understand this great high holy heavenly calling of yours to reach one more time into the standards of your 20 years of privilege which is to grow up into grace and to enjoy the 60,000 angels in the front, 60,000 angels in the back, the experience of Mahanian blessings rather than day by day ending up in grief and desperate sorrows. So Father, we pray that Lord God the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.